What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, I already made this video David Lemieux versus Gabe Rosado prediction. Can't find it on my computer. Don't know what the fuck happened. So, because I love you guys and you guys are great, I will redo the video, give my prediction. And I got a lot of predictions coming up because there's a lot of great fights coming up this month. Now, Gabe Rosado versus David Lemieux. Let me make this disclaimer. This might turn out to be an absolute barn burner, total fireworks, complete war of a fight. And I'm looking forward to it. I think it's a really good, solid sleeper hit, if you will. Now, I'm picking David Lemieux for this fight, and I see him winning via late stoppage. Really, whoever wins, I don't see it really going the distance just based on the styles, how they fight. Um, I think whoever is in the Barclays that night on Saturday, they're going to get their money's worth. I think it's that type of fight. And I also like the undercard, too. You got Hank Lundy, Thomas DeLorme, but that's another video. Gabe Rosado versus David Lemieux. Now, Gabe Rosado has had an up-and-down roller coaster career. He's went up against uh, Triple G, came up short. He tried to make it the best fight he could. It was initially supposed to happen at a catchweight. And him being the prideful, Philly, tough fighter that he is, he said, fuck a catchweight. I don't do catchweights. Fought uh, Triple G at the regular weight, and he got pieced up. His face was a bloody mess. And he's had some other setbacks. He fought Jay Leon Love. I thought he won that particular fight. The judges didn't see it. It was a money team, uh, TMT event. They gave it to Jay Leon Love, so there was some controversy there. Also, he fought Peter Quillen, and I think he got knocked down. Peter Quillen looked good in the first half, and it looked like Gabe Rosado was coming on strong, getting his second win. Peter Quillen hit. Gabe Rosado with a cut, and that cut opened up, and it was a nasty cut above the eye, and the fight was stopped shortly after that, just when people thought that Gabe Rosado was coming on strong and hurting Quillen. Then he fought the Charlo brother and got completely dominated in that particular fight. Went to BKB, which is similar to boxing, not quite boxing, no ropes and shit, and he got a knockout of Brian Vera. So he's had that up and down, shaky career. Earlier in his career, he lost to Alfredo Angulo. Um, he was working like part time at Home Depot or some shit, and then he's also boxing. Now, for me, I think it's a good fight. I think a lot of people, based on them not knowing David Lemieux, might be sleeping on David Lemieux. Plus, I'm hearing and reading a lot of comments where people are saying, "Oh, David Lemieux, he got stopped by Marco Antonio Rubio, and Triple G made easy work." In boxing, I try not to look at that, you know what I'm saying? Because Pacquiao got stopped by some nobodies that are currently still nobody, you know what I'm saying? And then he came back to thrash and ravage men that were bigger than him and just blow through the competition, you know what I mean? And Pacquiao's prime, guys like Ricky Hatton, De La Hoya, Cotto, Margarito. And you could say, oh, he got stopped early in his career. You know what I'm saying? So I don't do that. People go through different things. Um, I think David Lemieux, after he got stopped by Rubio, I believe he switched his trainer, went with a different guy in the very next fight. If I'm not mistaken, he fought uh, Joshim Alcine, and he stopped him. So things happen. David Lemieux was 21. I'm not making excuses. I don't have to do that on my channel. However, I just try to put things in perspective. Sometimes you have to go through those things. You're 21 or whatnot. Sometimes you have to take those L's or those lumps and come back stronger. Not everyone can just go their whole career like Mayweather or Rocky Marciano and go undefeated. So I think David Lemieux is at a different position. He looked exceptionally good against Fernando Guerrero. He just ripped his asshole out easy and he knocked him down and bad cut. And he just, I like his offense. I think he attacked from various angles he, he he varies his attack which is something i really like and he has power now that's one one thing playing in his favor i think he has power and he has a, a varied attack which is which is nice another thing is the power of underestimation when you get a guy like david lemieux he's from uh, canada and you don't know much about the guy there's not much at least in the states that i've seen on youtube there's not a lot of data to collect unless you have some hidden boxing archives. That makes a guy dangerous because we already know he has power, but on top of the unknown, you know what I mean? And I think Gabe Rosado might be underestimating David Lemieux, you know what I mean? He's he's off of a, 
a stoppage loss in the BKB versus Brian Vera. And he feels hungry. He switched up his training camp as well. So he's no longer working with uh, Billy. And he might be underestimating David Lemieux, I feel. He's looking to put on a good show. And to me, there's a lot more riding on it for Gabe Rosado than there is for David Lemieux, which could also be problematic for Rosado. Because Gabe Rosado, he's pretty much on his last leg. Like the BKB like breathed new life into his career. But he has taken several losses in, in the modern age of boxing. People look at losses like um, bastard children or some shit. You know what I mean? People don't ride with you and you don't get those big HBO Showtime dates when you keep taking L's. You know what I mean? Everybody celebrates and wants the winner. I'm not saying it's right. It's just a fact. That's pretty much how the scope of boxing is today. So to me, there's way more on the line for Gabe Rosado because if he loses, especially if he loses bad or gets stopped, then it's kind of the end of the road for him. People are really going to consider him a, a journeyman. A lot of people don't even think he should be headlining against David Lemieux. You know what I'm saying? They're like, oh, what has he done in boxing to, to get a headlining HBO card? I don't mind because I don't care. So if it's a good fight, it's a good fight. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate Gabe Rosado for being tough. And, you know what I mean? The the cold part about boxing, one of the, the shitty parts about boxing is there's fights like Mayweather Pacquiao. We all want to see. Don't get to see it, even though that's two of the era's best fighters without a doubt. And we don't get to see it. Meanwhile, you got guys like Gabe Rosado or Demarcus Corley, who have a resume of fighting everybody. Now, they have losses, and we know they have losses, but at least they're fighting the competition. Demarcus Corley fought Ruslan Provotnikov, he fought Maidana, he fought Mayweather, he fought Cotto, he fought Zab Judah. You know what I'm saying? That's a ton of people. Same thing with Gabe Rosado. Whereas Miguel Cotto hasn't fought Triple G, Gabe Rosado fought Triple G, Jay Leon Love, and Peter Quillen. You know what I'm saying? Yet, we can't get Peter Quillen to fight Triple G, vice versa, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And that's the shitty thing about boxing. So, I really think more on the line for Gabe Rosado because it's kind of the last leg. If Dave Lemieux comes over from Canada to New York and gets mopped up and stopped, then it's just another setback. But to me, I think he's expected to lose. He's the quote-unquote foreigner coming, and a lot of people already don't know him. So, it's, it's, it's kind of like he has nothing to lose at that point. Because they already don't know you. You can either rise to the occasion and make a name for yourself. Or you could get stopped or whatever by Gabe Rosado. So I think it will be a real good fight. I'm just picking David Lemieux late stoppage. I want to say rounds. Um, I want to say 9, 10, 11. Somewhere around that. Gabe Rosado is extremely tough. He's resilient. He wants to keep fighting. That's his mentality. He has that tough Philly mentality. And... I think another problem for Gabe Rosado is he has bad cuts. He cuts easy. You know what I mean? And just like muscle memory, if you work out and you start working out for two, three months, you can go back to the gym and you might not be able to lift the same amount of plates that you were lifting, but your your body retains muscle memory. And then you're going to be able to, it's not like you're starting from square one. You know what I mean? You can't wait two years or something, but if you waited a couple months and went back to the gym, you still retain muscle memory just from going through the motions and actively working out. Same thing in boxing. If somebody scars and um, has, you have scar tissue. So if you cut bad, it's, it's like you have scar tissue and it's easier. Your body remembers that. So Gabe Rosado, his face was bloody, a bloody mess versus triple G in the fight with Peter Quillen, he had a nasty cut. That's all scar tissue. You know what I'm saying? And you're going in there with a relentless, vicious puncher who varies his attack. And one thing I think a punch to watch for, as far as David Lemieux is concerned, is his left hand. His left hand is fierce. You know what I'm saying? So I just think uh, the fact that he cuts easy, he has more to lose, doesn't have much information on David Lemieux as much as like a Jay Leon Love or Peter Quillen. Jay Leon Love was with TMT, so there's a lot of information and um, you can go to my boy, Chris Robinson. Shout out to Hustle Boss. He had tons of footage with Jay Leon Love and sparring. And there's a lot of content available online. David Lemieux, not so much. Um, again, some people focus on the fact that David Lemieux got stopped. Again, he got stopped when he was 21. And if we're going to use that argument, 
The same could be said for Gabe Rosado. Gabe Rosado got stopped by Alfredo Angulo. Whether you think it was controversial or not, he still got stopped. And he was badly hurt in that particular fight. So they're both in the same boat as far as I'm concerned in that regard. They both took early losses it, losses, and um, had career setbacks. And they're trying to bounce back. I just think uh, David Lemieux is a bit fresher. And he's a little bit more of an enigma. He's, he has more mystique to to him. A lot of people, i seen comments where they were saying, oh, he looks scared, he looks shook at the post-fight or the pre-fight shit, the conference where he was speaking. I didn't really see much, you know what I mean? And I don't, like, I don't, I don't even trip off stuff like that. I trip off of body language to a degree, but some people just aren't good public speakers. This motherfucker's not Obama, you know what I'm saying? He's not going to be the the best speaker necessarily but fighting is his game that's what he knows how to do so i think some people play it up too much and they look read too far into certain things like oh when he was speaking because first of all when he was speaking the comments i was reading he was on the podium by himself so it's not like he was looking at gabe rosado and he was shaking in his boots david lemieux was um on the podium and he was speaking to himself again he might not be a public speaker or or whatnot he might be a little bit starstruck or shook because he's a guy from Canada in New York, a big venue at the Barclays. But come fight night, that's what he knows how to do. So I don't, I don't really worry about him. I don't think he's afraid, so to speak. Um, we'll see. We'll see if Gabe Rosado can prove me wrong. That is my official fight prediction. I'm looking for a war. It's going to be real scrappy, possibly dirty at times, and that's what I'm looking for. But I do see David Lemieux winning this. And I don't really see it going the distance, so I will say late stoppage and could be a cut stoppage. Gabe Rosado is very tough. I give him that. So I don't know if he can knock him out cold, but I see more or less a TKO. Let me know what you guys think. Does Gabe Rosado get upset? Does Gabe Rosado beat the brakes off of David Lemieux? Tell me what you think. I'm looking forward to it. Saturday will be cracking. Let me know what you guys think. I think there'll be a lot of highlight reels after this particular fight because neither fighter, I don't think, is going to back down. But Gabe Rosado does have a a height advantage, so we'll see what he could do. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like my video. As always, hate, comment, or subscribe. Till next video is Ego, signing off. (laughs) 